Hey everybody, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Martijn, and what you see here is an effect I did a few years ago. And uh, I put it up as, as one of the uh, options for a future video uh, on, on Patreon, and people chose this effect. And that's kind of cool because I think it fits with the end of the year and the cold dark days and Christmas and all that. So um, yeah, over the next two videos, we'll be making this, this effect. So if that interests you, I invite you to follow along. All right, so let's quit out of this and let's make a new shader. And um, let's start cleaning this up a little bit. So like always, I'm going to start with normalizing the UV coordinates so that the origin is in the middle. So I do that like this, xy, and I'm going to divide just by the y so that we have an aspect ratio corrected UV coordinate. And uh, I'm for the color, I'm just going to make it black. So that would be uh, VEC3 with zero for everything. And I'm also going to get rid of that. So, um, okay, I forgot a, a capital over here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to draw one of these trees. And, and the tree is just a, a bunch of boxes stacked on top of each other. Uh, with one little tweak, uh, which is that the boxes can be tapered. So like the box is, is, um, is always on the y-axis, but it can be tapered in or out. So let's, let's make that thing. Uh, so let's make something called a taper box. Um, and so for that, I'm just going to do float m equals a taper box of something. And then in the end, we're just going to add that to our, to our color so that we can see what we're doing. And um, that taper box is going to take as an input. Actually, you know what? Before before I do that, I should probably draw some some coordinate axes so we can see what we're doing. Um, so let's draw a a y-axis. So for that, I'm just going to take the absolute value of the of the x uh, uv, and I'm going to say if that's smaller than some thickness, uh, then a color color it green. So that's cold.g equals one. And let's make that thickness. So uh, flow thickness. And you could put any value here, but I'm, I'm going to make it one pixel thick. Or actually, in this case, it will be two pixels thick. And that we do that like so. Just I one divided by the resolution. Uh, let's see what that does. So that gives me uh, y axis and let's do the same for, thing for the x axis. So I'm just going to copy this and then instead of the uv.x, I'm going to do the uv.y. So basically, it's just getting me, giving me the height, right, of, of my pixel. And as it gets closer to zero, uh, um, then the absolute value is going to be smaller than some thickness. And that's what we're going to color it red in this case. So that's my, my y axis. All right, so back to the taper box. Uh, let's just undo this here. Uh, so the taper box is going to take as an input a UV coordinate because we, we need to know which pixel we're going to evaluate to see whether it's part of the box or not. And then this box is going to take um, it's going to take a few inputs uh, like because because the box can taper. Uh, me, uh, it means that it can have a different width at the bottom than it can have at the top. Um, so, so, so those are two values. So let's say at the bottom we wanted 0.3 wide, and at the top we wanted only 0.1 wide. Uh, and then the next two uh, parameters that I'm going to throw in there is where the box starts, at which height it starts, and at which height it ends. So the bottom, like the bottom and the top of the box. Uh, so I could say it starts at 0.1 and it ends at 0.3. Let's say. And so now let's make that that function. So I'm going to go float taper box. And then here it's going to take as an input a position P, which is my UV coordinate. And then it's going to take a width at the bottom, which I'll call WB, a width at the top, which is called WT. And then it's going to take uh, a, a Y, a height at the bottom. So a YB and float YT. And then I'm going to build that inside of here. And uh, I'm going to make use of, a, uh, of the smooth step function a lot. And so that I don't have to type that each time, I'm just going to say this at the top. I'm going to do define s a, b, t, 
t and n is smooth step a comma b comma t and that just makes it that i don't have to type smooth step each time i can just type s uh okay so let's go inside of here and let's make a float m let's say that that uses a smooth step and then we're going to return that that value um, and so let's let's first uh look at the um at the bottom here at the bottom edge so let's put the bottom edge in and the way to do that is i can say p dot y which is the y component of my of my pixel coordinate minus minus yb um, and then i'm going to put in two thresholds one slightly below zero and one slightly above zero uh, let's just see what that does uh, so that gives me this edge over here and uh, because right now the white is drowning out my coordinate axis, let me go over here and multiply this by 0 0.5 so that uh, you can see it a bit better. So that's the bottom edge. Um, now let's do the same thing for the top edge. So let me um, just move this. Oh, actually before that. So, so basically what, what it does over here, it just remaps this expression here, just remaps uh, uh, like to zero when my p dot y uh, is is the bottom edge, right? If it gets closer to the bottom edge, then this entire thing gets closer to zero. And because I have my edges on both sides of zero, you get you get this here. And uh, and the edges, I can move them out. So if I make this this far, if I push that away from zero, then you'll see that my edge gets blurrier here. Okay, and we can make use of that. So let's let's also take that out here, and instead of hard coding it, let's just add it as a as a parameter. So I'm going to have a blur parameter as well. So I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to say float blur. And then over here, I'm going to have to add that. So 0 0.0, whatever, 0 0.05, let's say. And so that does that. And now if I make it smaller, it's going to make it sharper there. Okay, so this is for the bottom edge. And now let's see if we can put the top edge in. So I'm just going to copy this, put it over there. And then here, instead of the y of the bottom, I'm going to use the y of the top. So let's see what that does. So that makes the edge higher. Um, but for the for the upper edge, I want it to go from from white to black or from one to zero as opposed to the other way around. Uh, well, for that, well, you could either do this, you could do one minus over here that will turn it around. But another way to do it is you can just uh, swap these swap these thresholds around so that the negative threshold is the second one. And that will do that. So now we have a, a bottom edge, which is which is the first one, and a top edge, which is the second one. And now if we multiply those together, we get that. So that takes care of the top and the bottom. Now let's try to do the same thing for the left and the right. Uh, so let me go over here, and let's copy that one more time. And then so for the left and the right, well, that would be a function of the x, right, of the left, right of the uv coordinate. So I do p dot x minus the width at the bottom, let's say. So let's see what that looks like. So that gives me this edge over here. Uh, again, similar to how we had it with the second one here, we want it opposite. Like I want the, I want the, the bright value uh, close, close to the center and then go to black. So I can, again, I can just turn these around. Okay. Um, and now I, I could do the same thing for the edge on the other side, uh, but because my box is always going to be centered on the y-axis, uh, I can do it better like because I can just fold over this part, the left part of the screen onto the right part. I can mirror it and the way to do that is I just say p dot x equals the absolute of p dot x. And that just makes it that if my x is like minus 0.5 then it just folds over to plus 0.5 and that way you can get the other edge for free. Okay and let's just uh, multiply this so that we uh, we keep the top edge and the bottom edge uh, or we, like, we take that into account as well. <laughs> All right, so now we have a box that is the width. Um, so this is the width at the bottom and then we have the width at the top, which should be that. Um, so now we, like, we wanna make it that at the bottom it is this wide and at the top it's that wide. And the way to do that is to make another variable. Let's just call it W for width. Oh, and I go over here and let's make it float w equals. And so this w should be um, should be w the width at the bottom uh, when when p dot y is is at the bottom, and it should be the width at the top where p dot y is at the top. And um, 
And to do that, let's first make a function that return, I'll just write it here, that returns zero where p dot y equals the bottom and it returns one where p dot y equals uh, the top. Okay, uh, and to do that, let's just first look at this first expression over here. That is simple enough. So a function that returns zero when p dot y equals the bottom, well, that is just uh, p dot y minus, minus the bottom edge, right? Because if I put p dot y, or if, if I put yb in here, then I get yb minus yb, and that's gonna be zero. Uh, so that's good, and now we have to make it that it also does the second thing where it returns one when my p dot y is yt. Uh, well, that I could just do like this. I can say yt minus yb. So I can just divide it by yt minus yb because what happens now if I put yt, if I'm at the top edge, then this, then this turns into yt, and then I get yt minus yb divided by itself. And something divided by itself is going to be 1. So, um, so yeah, so this will remap uh, from 0 to 1. And once we have that, we can very easily go to any other remap to any other value because we can just use a mix and we could say, well, okay, mix from the bottom to the top with this mix value that we just created here. And now we have a taper box that we can use for many cool things. So let's just have a quick look at this. So this is the, uh, the width at the top, so I can make it wider. I could also make it wider than the bottom, then it will just taper the other way. Or I can make a triangle like that, making it zero. Um, so we can use this to start building, building the, the, uh, the tree. Uh, so let's start doing that. So um, let's put the, first make the trunk. So the trunk is gonna go from 0, 3 wide, it's very narrow, to 0, 3 wide, because it's not tapered at all. Uh, now we have that, and now we're gonna stick that on the bottom. So this is the bottom edge, so it's gonna start at 0 and it's gonna end at uh, 0.25, like that. And, uh, and so that's the trunk. And uh, let's do a few other things. Let's, um, let's move the entire canvas down a little bit so we can see it better. So I could just go over here and say uv.y plus equals 0.5. That will just shift the entire thing down so that the x-axis is at the bottom now. And uh, then let's also turn off the y-axis for now because we, really, we don't really need it. Actually, let's turn both of them off. Um, Okay, so that is that, and so now let's add let's add some stuff. So this is the, the first part of the canopy. Uh, so canopy 1, and uh, because the trunk ended at 0.25, well, that's where my canopy has to start. So it starts at 0.25, and it's going to end at 0.5. And then for the width, I'm going to say it is 0.2 wide, and then uh, at the bottom, and then at the top, it's going to be 0.1 wide. Okay, and then I'm gonna have to add that because right now it would just show the second part, but if I do that, then it adds it. Um, and uh, before I get too far, let's also take this blur value out because I don't wanna, I don't want the same value to be hard coded everywhere because then afterwards, if we wanna change it, it's gonna be a big pain. So I'm just gonna say blur here and blur here. I'm gonna do a float, blur equals 0.0. Uh, zero 05, let's say. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's that. So that's the first part of the canopy. Now let's make the second part of the canopy. So again, like before, uh, it has to start where the other one ended. So it starts at 0.5 and it goes to 0.75. And then this one is going to, at the bottom, is going to be 1.5 wide and at the top is going to be 0 0.5 wide. And that would be my canopy 2. So that adds the second part of the canopy. And then we're going to have to add the top. So once more, and at the top it's going to be, the bottom part is going to be 0.1 wide, and at the top, because it's a triangle, it's going to be zero. Uh, and then this is going to go from 7.5 to 1. And that would be the top, so the top. All right, so that's already looking pretty cool. Um, let's put this in its own function. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to take all of this, I'm going to put that in, in, 
into a tree function. So I'm going to go vec for tree. And so this, this tree function is going to return a full color, a full red, green, blue, and alpha. And we need the alpha because we're going to blend it into the rest of the image. So uh, yeah. So let me just copy that over there. And so this thing is going to take as an input a um, vec to UV coordinate. And um, does it need anything else for now? Yeah, I guess it needs the blur as well. So I'm going to also pipe that in there, float blur. Um, and now um, yeah, we might as well add a color as well. So a color would be a red, green, and a blue. So that's a VEC3 call. OK, so now we have a color. And so now what we can do is here we can say um, return. Uh, vec4, which is the color, and then and then uh, for the for the alpha, I'm going to do the the thing that we just drew. So that would be that would be M. And uh, let's just see if that if that works. And also uh, over here, because we're going to use this color to like blend multiple things on top of each other, uh, we need an alpha channel as well. So I'm going to make it a float four or a vector four instead of a vector three. And then all the way down here. We don't have to do this anymore. We could just say that. All right. Uh, and so now let's see um, what that does. So let's uh, let's make vec4 tree and then get and then use the tree drawing function to draw a tree. So we're going to stick the UV in there. And then for the color, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to say white. And then for the blur, I'm going to use that blur value there. Uh, and then once we have the three, now we have to blend it into uh, into the image. And so for that, I'm going to do call equals mix of call and and the tree based on the alpha value of the tree. So where the alpha is one, it's going to stamp it on top, and where it's zero, it's not going to it's just going to show the background. So that's tree dot alpha here. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, now we can't do that anymore. So let's just do that. Okay, so that seems to that seems to work. And now, if I wanted to change the color of the tree, I could do that. So I could say uh, whatever, something like that. Um, okay, so now let's try to make this tree a little bit more interesting. Uh, what I want to do is I want to add a little shadow underneath, like here where the trunk is, like underneath the first canopy, the second canopy, and the third canopy. I want to add like a little stylized shadow. Uh, and so there, there are many ways of doing that, but in the interest of saving time, I'm just going to use the same taper box for this. So I'm going to say shadow equals, and then I'm going to add a taper box, a so taper box of UV. And um, well, let's just put in some numbers now. So I like I want the taper box to be tapered the other way. So it's going to go from let's say uh, 0.1 at the bottom to 0.5 at the top, and then that shadow, the first shadow, is going to be right here. So that is going to be like the top of that is going to be at 0.25 and the bottom is a little bit lower than that. So let's say 0.15 and 0.25 and then with the same blur. And um, let's see what that looks like. And so yeah, let, let, let me just make the alpha one for a second so that we can even see what we're doing. Uh, and then I, I say call um, minus equals shadow. I guess I can do that. Let me see. Okay, so now I'm just looking at the at the taper box itself, um, uh, but but eventually you're going to see it like that, right? So, uh, but what we want to do is I want to move that box over so that we have um, we have an angled shadow. And in order to move that box over from to left and right, uh, what I have to do is I have to remap this UV here so that it moves. So what I can do is minus vec2. If I do minus 0, 0, then obviously nothing's going to happen. But if I subtract from the x, let's say, then I can move this box to the right or to the left. And so now, if I go here, you can see like now I have an angled, an angled shadow underneath there. And so let's do the same thing for all the other, for all the other canopies. Uh, so I'm going to do plus equals. And then, um, and then the second shadow is going to stick right underneath the second canopy. So it's going to stick right underneath 0.5. And let's say it goes from 0.4 to 0.5. So now I have a shadow there. 
Uh, now the only thing is, uh, I like to make it extra artsy fartsy. I want I want the second I want the second uh, shadow to be opposite. So one is angled like this. I want the second one to be angled like that. Uh, so for that, instead of minus here, I'm going to go plus so that it pushes to the other side. And then I don't want this straight part here. Um, so let's move it over a little bit farther. So point 20, 25, let's say. And maybe I want it, maybe I also don't want it as deep as this. So I'm going to push this up a little bit. So this is the bottom edge of the taper box. So if I make that higher, then it's going to uh, push it closer underneath that. And then um, let's do the same thing one last time for the top one. Uh, and for the top one, I'm going to go on the other side again. So I'm going to go like that. And the top one is going to stick right underneath the, lot, the top, which is at 0.75. So I'm going to go from point, uh, 0.7 maybe. Okay, so something like that. So now I have kind of like a stylized shadow uh, going on. And, uh, and maybe you don't want it all the way black, so then you could just uh, multiply this by some smaller value to make it uh, slightly less black. Although I like it pretty black, so maybe I'll do it's like 0.8, let's say. Uh, all right, so now we have a tree. Great. So let's see. Um, so now we would want a bunch of trees. So let me just get rid of this and let's zoom out a little bit. So UV times equals 5, let's say. So that just zooms me out a little bit. And um, yeah, in order to get a second tree, uh, what I could do is I could copy this again and then afterwards uh, mix it in again. That's the way to get two, two trees. Uh, but there is a smarter way if you want like a whole row of trees. Um, so let's look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first visualize the UV coordinates. So col.rg equals UV. So that shows me the UV coordinates that we have right now. And it, like the origin is in the middle and it goes to 1 and then 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and negative on the other side. Um, um, but what I can do is I can I can repeat this UV coordinate. So if I if like if I can get it to repeat, then I only have to draw one tree and and I I get a second tree, or I can get an infinite number of trees for free. Uh, so what I can do here is I can say UV dot x equals the fract of UV dot x. Uh, so so now the UV goes from zero to one, three, four, five, whatever. But if I do this, uh, the fract will just only return the the decimal component uh, of the number. So what that will do is it will it will repeat the domain like this. And um, uh, now my trees are are all the way to the left, and I don't really want that. And by the way, let me see if I can make the tree still white because it's a bit annoying to have it blue. Okay, um, as yeah, so my trees are, are, are on the edge right now because my origin is on the edge of the box, but that's easily remedied because I can just subtract 0 0.5 from it and now it has the origin in the middle of each box. And now I have a, a bunch of trees for the same price of, of one, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, so the next thing I want to do is I, like, I don't want an even spacing. I don't want every tree right in the middle. You know, this is not a palm oil, oil plantation. Like we want, we want some randomness. Um, and so for that, the first thing I have to do, if I want some randomness per box, then I first need to have an identifying number per box. And for that, I'm going to make an ID value. So I'm going to say float ID equals, and it's going to be the floor of UV dot X. And so floor and fract, I said it many times before, they are kind of, uh, two sides of the same metal, like floor uh, only takes the integer component and fract only takes the fractional component. So it basically splits the number. Um, and so what floor will do, it will be at zero. For any pixel in this box, it will be zero. And then for any pixel in this box, it will be one and two and three and four. And, um, and we can use that. Um, so I can use this floor to come up with some random number. So this is going to be some number now, one, two, three, four, like it's going to be some integer. Um, and I'm going to turn that into a random number like this. I'm going to say float n equals, um, I'm going to stick that, that ID into a sine wave. 
and I'm going to multiply that by some by some number. And uh, it's it's good to not have too small, but also not too large, uh, because too large numbers uh, often, especially on cheaper GPUs, uh, doesn't give nice results. So now, so now uh, I'm somewhere on a sine wave, right? So uh, and and the sine is going to return a number between minus one and one. And so now I'm going to multiply that by some larger number. So now I'm between plus 5,400 and minus 5,400. And now I'm going to take the fractional component of that. So now, like, I'm only going to take, or like, I'm going to get a number between 0 and 1 out of this. And um, I don't want a number between 0 and 1. I want a number between minus 1 and 1. So for that, I can just multiply it by 2. So now it's between 0 and 2 and subtract 1. So now it's between minus 1 and 1. Um, and I can use that number to offset my tree. So if I go over here and I say, um, actually, let's, let's, add, let's add two uh, parameters here for the, um, uh, for the x and the y. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add an x here and I'm gonna add a y here, and uh, I'm gonna in initialize those to zero. So x equals zero, uh, and then float y equals zero. Okay, there needs to be a decimal point there, and then in, inside of the tree function, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that. So I'm gonna do float x and float y. Uh, and then over here, I can just say um, uv minus equals a vector 2 of x and y. And that will just remap remap it so that I can move my, my tree anywhere I want. So let's see if that works. So now I should be able to uh, move my tree to the right, Okay, although all of them move to the right. And I can also move it up and down. Um, yeah. So that seems to work. That's great. Um, so now we want a random, we want a random, uh, a, a random position. So I have my n that goes from plus one to minus one. Um, I could try the n here, but then you'll see that a bunch of them are going to be cut off because my box only goes from plus 0.5 or minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. Uh, and, and I also have to take into account the width of the, uh, of the tree, right? So the, at the widest part, the tree is point, goes from minus 0.2 to 0.2. Um, so well, what, that, what that comes down to is that I can move, um, I think I can move them left and right only 0 0.3. So let's see here. Yeah, see, so now you have one that goes all the way to the edge here, uh, but none of them are cut off. And um, let's actually move this. So let's go over here and say uv.x plus equals i time. And then times some smaller value because it's going to go too fast. OK, so now I have a bunch of trees and they're all in different positions inside of their box. And uh, let's go over here like that, slower. Um, OK, so that's one thing. Another thing is I also want to be able to scale this, um, uh, to, to scale these trees. And in order to scale them, I could just uh, uh, multiply, yeah, multiply this by some vector two, and and if you multiply by by one, then it will not do anything, right? So this doesn't do anything. But if I want it, if the, if I want the tree to be to be larger, then I can multiply this by a smaller than one number, and it will and it will scale the tree up. Uh, or or down, right? So I can make it also a short, fat tree. And so um, what I can do here is I could add, um, I could I could use that same x value or the same n value. Uh, I mean, if if you have more time, you can make a different random value for this, but I'm not going to bother. So this goes from minus one to plus one, which is much, which is too much. So let's multiply it by 0.2. So now this entire thing can go from 0.8 to 1.2. And so now you have some trees that are tall and some trees that are small. Um, OK. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a ground. And for a ground, let's see here. I can just do, um, let's see. 
um, let's let's put it all the way after after I put the tree in. So the tree is over here, and let's say over here I could say call plus equals a smooth step, and the smooth step. Let's just put in a straight ground first. Uh, so similar to how I did the edges before on the taper box, I could just say uh, uv dot y um, uv dot y like minus the height, right? And the height, but if the height is at zero, then it's just uv dot y. Um, and then I do, let's say, minus blur and blur. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that puts the ground in the wrong position. So I just have to swap these two around like that. Uh, and now we want to make some sort of uh, height, um, some sort of fluctuating height, right? So, and for that, I am going to make a function and I call it get height. And then, well, so yeah, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add like a sign of something. So I could add the sign of um, the sign of uv dot x, although although I'm changing the uv dot x here. So I got a let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to do it before anyways. Um, let me just put that over here before I screw with the uv coordinate over there. Uh, so I want something like that, let's say, but maybe a bit more complicated than that. So I'm going to make a get height function for that. So I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to say get height, and then of uv dot x, and then I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to go float get height, um, and it's going to take as an input just some x, and then as an output, it's going to return. Let's say the sine of x. Uh, well, let's first try that. Uh, so that shouldn't change anything, and it doesn't. And then, uh, yeah, let's just play around with this a little bit. So um, I, I don't want it to be as high frequency as this, so I can just do that. And then I can add another smaller sign that uh, goes a bit faster, but it is, um, uh, but it is of less amplitude. And um, I don't want these to be exactly a factor of two. So let's say let's let's add some random like number here. Okay, so now we have I don't know something that looks a bit more interesting. And you can make it as interesting as you want if you if you spend more time on it. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to have to stick these trees on the same height. Okay, and um, for that I am going to go. Yeah, so for that I can use this. Um, this x and y here. So if I if I just move this to over here, that shouldn't change anything. Okay. So but now because I can use this y to move my trees right up and down. Um, so let's see what happens if I take this this height over here, and instead of that, I just say plus y, and over here I say this, and. Uh, <clears throat> like that doesn't really work uh, but let's go over here and let's say minus y and so now I have my trees stuck on the ground more or less uh, just, well there's a few things with them the thing is I want the trees to be straight like because right now the tree gets drawn like every column of the tree gets drawn at a different height based on the ground height uh, which obviously uh, we don't want so um, Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to, so instead of uv.x, I'm going to have to use this id value here. Um, so, okay, so, so here I'm drawing the ground. So this is the ground. This is the ground. And then after the ground, I'm going to have to recalculate my y value to make sure that, um, that I, I get it for the entire box and not for every column of the box. So for that, I could just use my ID, let's say. Let's see what that does. Okay, so now at least we could see that the trees are straight. Uh, they're just not on the ground. And uh, why is that? Um, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, it might have something to do with this, uh, with this scaling factor here. Um, because I probably have to do that after after I subtract this here. Um, so I guess what I did here was not ideal. Let's take this out here and put it and put it in front again. So I'm just going to take that 
I'll take that out. I'm going to take that out over here. And then what I can do here is, because what I have to do is I have to do it probably beforehand. So I have to do it here. So here I can say minus vec2 x comma y. Let's see. Cross our fingers, hope it works. Okay, and then put a minus there. Okay. Yeah, and now uh, one one thing to note, I think it might be correct. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, maybe it still isn't. Um, but the thing is, I'm not right now. I'm taking the side of the box, and I have to take um, the middle of the box plus plus the x over here to get the right height. So let me see here. Oh yeah. Okay, so that seems to have put all of them all of them at the right height. Uh, there was one one thing is that the um, that the trunk starts exactly at zero, and 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 if the if the ground is at an angle, then you can kind of see that. So let's make the trunks a little bit lower than zero. So here, this is where the trunk starts. So if I do that at a minus 0 0.05, then it will stick into the ground a little bit. Um, okay, so now we have that. So let's have a quick look at that. All right. So there we have one layer of trees. Um, okay, so yeah, I think I'm going to stop here for the first for the first video. Um, so the second video will be out in in a week, unless you're a patron, and that, then you can just go to Patreon right now and find the second one. Um, yeah, otherwise this video is going to get too long. It's already 37 minutes. So see you next time.